Welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman, and today I have something very special for you on the Active Towns podcast. We're going to be heading down to Sao Paulo, Brazil, uh, to meet up with uh, Mario as well as Eloisa uh, with the Aero program, which is using the bicycle to reduce social inequities. Uh, this is a fascinating discussion, so let's jump right into it. Well, Maria and Eloisa, thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Welcome. Thank you, John, for inviting us. Thank you, John. Let me turn the floor over to you both to introduce yourselves and your organization. So go ahead and take it away. You can flip a coin as to who goes first. So um, thanks again for the invitation, John. Uh, my name is Eloisa. I'm a urban planner and uh, I work in Arumea Zero as a project coordinator. And yeah, I think we will represent the institution. So your turn. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Murilo Casagrande. I'm born and raised here in Sao Paulo. São Paulo is a large city from Brazil, uh, and I also founder and director of Aromea Zero Institute. It's a huge name, but we can also call it just Aro. That means rim. The but in Portuguese, the rim of the bicycle we call it Aro. Uh, so Armea Zero is a NGO that uses bicycles to promote more green cities and a more inequality, uh, a less inequality society. Sorry, a more equal society using bicycle. Since 2011, yeah, that's our website. This is the Portuguese, uh, the English uh, version. And we are very proud to talk here in Activitals about our organization, John. So the first project that I want to talk about is uh, Living Through Bicycle. And Viver the Bike is Living Through Bicycle. In English, Viver the Bike is Living Through Bicycle. And the course that we teach mechanics, entrepreneurship, and how people cannot just use bicycle to transport themselves, but also has a way of life to work and have their business. And we also have a very important objective that is to put more women, more black people, indigenous people into the business, in the bicycle business, in the bicycle way of life. Eloisa, have a presentation that she did it in Belosi talking about that. So more than create new businessmen, huge entrepreneurships, the idea is to be more inclusive and more bring more diversity to bicycle. We launched this project in 2016, and since uh, that we uh, formed 100 and 5,000 people. And wow, we are very proud is, about this project. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. And Eloise, how did you get involved uh, with the organization? Uh, I coordinate this project that is, uh, this program, Living Truth Bicycle, has a project inside it that is called More Bike Parking Stations. And we, what we are doing now is to implement a model of bike parking station that create job opportunities in the outskirts through uh, this model of bike parking. So this is a project that is related to the to Living Truth Bicycle. And yeah, that's my relation to the institution. And uh, you'd mentioned that this particular project uh, launched in 2016. How long has the entire organization been around? It's uh, 2011, we made our first project in Capão Redondo. It's a uh, very poor, it used to be more violent here in Sao Paulo. And we start doing something that we should 
uh, make doing its collecting uh, used bicycle, abandoned bicycles, and building. They sell buildings, and then we take it, it to classrooms, another NGOs, and then we teach something about these bicycles, about bicycle. We can also, if you go, uh, the first project Eloisa managed to coordinate here was Bicatona. Do you remember it, Lo? This time, it's the, so you have the Viver the Bike, living through bicycle icon, then you have Bicatona icon, and then you have a, a small one with a, some narrows that's called bike parada no rola, or it's something uh, I stopped stopped bicycle don't don't cycle don't don't circle. I don't know how to translate it. Sorry, but that's our campaign to collect it. Use it bicycle, adult ones, the big ones we use to teach mechanic, and the small ones for kids we use it at our project called. Zero Little View, or Rodinha Zero in Portuguese. That's another project. And the bicycles that we can't use anymore, we uh, send it for, in a correct form, to recycle. The tires, all the, the, the parts, not just throwing away, but we uh, send it to uh, recycle. So... After 10 years, more 12 years, 12 years, sorry, collecting bicycle, we collected more than 2,000 bicycle. Now we want to collect this year uh, more 1,000 bicycle. Fantastic. That's, that is such a, a wonderful program. It's so, it's so wonderful to see these types of programs. I'm familiar with these types of programs because we've seen them. I've seen them in other locations around the world. Are there other programs like this in other areas in Brasil? Yeah, you can see uh, a lot of other organizations like Armea Zero. Here in Brazil, we have the UCB. It's like the... Union of Cyclists of Brazil. They so we have it at, uh, in all over the country, in every city, another organization like Brazil. But what we don't have here so much, and that's something that we want to promote more, is the bike kitchens. I guess that is much more uh, familiar, and you have a lot of them in the North America, in the U.S. and Canada. But also in the in, in Europe, all over Europe. But uh, here in Brazil, we, what we see there is a lot of projects that just collected used bus, bicycles, fix them, and then donated. Here in São Paulo, not uh, it's beginning uh, when we started. It was just Armea Zero and maybe one more organization that used to be that. But nowadays, we can see there's a lot of organization collecting used bicycle and donating for kids, uh, mostly during the Christmas and holidays dates. But we are, we can see uh, more, more people working with bicycle. And then we created a, a guide called uh, Auto Guide, that we teach how people can make this kind of projects too, like uh, how you start a campaign to collect and use it by schools and how you can make it happen, projects like Aro, uh, where you teach kids to how to cycle without the, the little wheels, uh, how you can teach mechanic, and we also promote a street art festival Called bike art. So uh, we also talked how important it is to support the bicycle culture, not for just cycle and teach mechanic, but to make a more colorful and more security and uh, more green city. So that's not something that Aro created. I always uh, Aro didn't create the wheel. Invite the wheel, but we 
tropicalized some actions that we saw, like the bike kitchens. And you can find a lot of organization and people doing a great job here in Brazil. And I, I paused on this particular uh, screenshot here uh, on the website uh, just because I, I'm marveling at the, the the flexibility and the scope of what you guys are doing. I mean, this is fantastic. You're talking about, you know, uh, social innovation that supports, uh, you know, through training and financial uh, resources and ideas, projects and businesses that use the bicycle to find uh, to strengthen low income territories uh, in Brazil. I mean, this is like really, really powerful stuff. And as you mentioned earlier, looking at ways to make it more equitable and get more uh, women also participating in, in, in this, this world. So it's not, not just a bunch of dudes. <laughs> Let me so talk a little bit about that. How, how much of a challenge is that to get more and more females, you know, sort of integrated in using bicycles or is that natural or, or is that, you know, happening in Brazil already? John, uh, if you can present this PDF about the presentation that in Velo City, it's called Women in Cycling, just because we brought here some data that is shocking. I think I was talking to Murilo that we have this context in Brazil that is Really, there is a huge inequality between women and men in the cycling sector and also cycling. Here, just to mention something, we have like just 7% of the people who use bike in Brazil are women, like 7%. It's, yeah. And uh, and also we have this context that we, we still are really far away from understanding bicycle as a means of, as a mean of transport. Of course, we understand it, but we have like in Sao Paulo, that is the huge, the biggest city in the country, just 0.9% uh, of all trips made by bicycle. So what, when we, 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 when we look to the gender agenda, it's, we are really far away. Uh, and it's been, we also think it's really important to bring more women to our projects. And yeah, if you can go ahead, we have some examples here and about how we do that. This is just some data that we brought about how is the women in the cycling industry. This is in UK and this, the, the other slide brings how we are doing that in Brazil. You can go ahead just to mention it. Yeah, we have like, uh, we, in Ado, we try also to bring more women in leadership roles here. And so our team is mostly made by women. But we are, we also try to bring more women in our courses and in our projects. So, uh, yeah, like, for example, Living Truth Bicycle, that is this project that we didn't present it before, 54% of all the people are women and it's, it's still hard to get to have this number because sometimes uh, we have more men trying to do the course so it's not easy to guarantee that we have women in them and yeah this is what we are trying to do and here we, we got some examples that from women that participated in our courses so the next slide it's about this group called Senorita Scubier. Uh, they work, this is a collective that work with psychologistics and they participated in our, in many, in many of our projects. This photo is from Bikaton, this one about social innovation. And yeah, the other slide is, um, we also try to bring more women in mechanics because we know that the sector is mostly made by men. And yeah, we have this picture here about Viola and she is a professor in the course. So she's a professor of mechanics in our course. And the last slide is also to understand how we can bring more women in tourism, understanding that bicycle can be used, um, yeah, as a mean of tourism. And uh, this is a group uh, called Pedal, Pedal Preta. And here is also important that we have this intersection between the gender agenda and also the rational points because it's a group mostly made by black women. And it's part of a project that we do in Macaé. This, it's a city in 
Rio de Janeiro, there are so many other projects related, but uh, this group participated also in Bikeathon, that is the Social Innovation Marathon. Yeah. Fantastic. That's yeah. That's the scenario of it. Wow. That, that is really, really fantastic. And, and I see here too, the, the, you know, kind of who is help helping sponsor and backing the organization. You're getting some, uh, some, some backing. The other thing that I noticed is that on, on this one slide here, when we were going through the numbers is that, um, 70% of your staff at the, uh, at the organization is female as well. Um, I think that's such a huge point is we need female representation within these organizations if we expect to, you know, attract and bring more females uh, into using bikes for everyday purposes. Um, the other thing that I noticed, too, is that um, and, and we see this in, in cities in around the globe is that. Uh, initially it starts out relatively balanced in, ten, in terms of gender when we're talking about children participating, you know, boys and girls alike, you know, tend to learn how to ride a bike at about the same rate. Uh, but then uh, it, the, the differences start to, to kind of creep in. Sometimes the boys continue to ride maybe for recreation, maybe for sport, maybe for, for utilitarian purposes, uh, but for, for girls, it drops off. Are you seeing the same thing in, in Brazil is that, you know, they kind of, you start off at about the same right with boys and girls learning how to ride and then they drop off or is it a little different there? Well, uh, what I heard, I, I hear from other women, it's, Maybe not not nowadays, but bicycle used to be a boy's toy, like a, a boy's game. Like and girls used to play with dolls, to play like have a kitchen, have a little home. And, but it, I heard uh, a friend of us, Jo Pereira, she told me like he, that. Always the, the, the games from for boys, it's on the street, it's about to go away and discover the world. And then playing for girls, it's take care of home, take care of other guys. So it's nowadays when we promoted the Zero Little Wheel, it's very important to us to talk with the people who work at the schools and NGOs like it. That's uh, activity for girls and boys. Please don't uh, make something just for boys. And people are less, don't have so much hesitance with that. Like, it's all great. They talk to us, oh, that's great that you are promoting that for girls too. But we can see, Eloisa told now, like when we open for a new class of living through bicycle, maybe 8% of the people uh, who want to make the course are men. So we need to make more uh, communication and partnerships to give the idea like woman, everybody can cycle, can work with, with, with bicycle. So we are changing that, but it's not an uh, idea very common like it. Uh, it's a lot of people still think like bicycle is something for uh, guys who are very strong and very athletic and that's very sad but we can see like it, the Tour de France it's the second edition I guess that accepting women so it's a huge challenge here in Brazil and what we see that also very sad John, it's like the idea that bicycle it's a toy for kids and when you grow up you have to abandon it if you are a woman or a boy like uh, and that's something in, during the uh, adolescence when the people are getting old like they really want to get a motorcycle or a car because of the status so we try to show that working with bicycle and keep it cycling, uh, it's not something that you are not growing up. 
you are growing up you will have different consciousness but uh, we, we our projects try to show that for young people like living through bicycle it's a it's a very sexy it's very hype it's not just you are lunatic and you didn't grow up it for both genders yeah Eloisa, what your comments on that as well Uh, I was just thinking that we don't have this data, but I have this perception that when we are children, we have less women cycling than boys. And I think it's because, as Murilo said, uh, this is really related to be on the streets. And when we have a context of really high social inequality, it's not safe for women to be on the streets. So... That's why I think this is something that is different in Brazil and in other countries in the global south that maybe uh, since we are children, there is this big difference between women cycling and boys cycling. Yeah. How much does um, poverty come into play uh, with that? Uh, because if, if a family can't afford to have Uh, multiple bicycles for multiple children, you know, is, is that a factor? I would think that it has to be a factor. Well, uh, you have two things in Brazil. The first one, that's, it's very expensive bicycles here in Brazil. There is a lot of taxes. Years ago, uh, the bicycle uh, was put in a box to pay tax like toys And toys are essential goods like food or other things. So we have a very, very high uh, tax in bicycle that makes very expensive. The other thing is where to keep all these bicycles. So we know that a lot of people living in poverty, in favelas, with very, very small uh, space. So you have like everyone have a, a bicycle can be a challenge where to keep it. But we also know and see how, in this case, the bicycle are used for different... Uh, the same bicycle is used for the dad go to work and the, the children start to cycle in huge bicycles, like cycling inside the frame uh, with a lot of ability. And that's a good, I, I love this picture of the kids chill up. It's in a very small alley here in Sao Paulo after a day where we promoted the Zero Little Wheel. And children love it because they don't have the bicycle, this small bicycle, the 16 or 12 wheels at home. So it's a Some, uh, uh, one of the schools that we did the Zero Little Wheel projects, more than 90% didn't have a bicycle at home. And less than 56 didn't know how to cycle because they don't have the bicycle at home. But when we started the project, we donated to the school like 10 or 12 bicycles And in three months, this number like almost double. When we when we left the school after two months working for the project, like 70, 75% knows how to ride a bicycle alone. So uh, that's very important to promote and to give this access, uh, access to bicycle. And what we see also is uh, sometimes... Uh, the bicycle have a very simple problem, like the tire needs to be changed or something, the brake, but it's also very expensive to make this, uh, this service in a bike shop. So we teach that in living through bicycle, and we also donated for the school a small box of tools so they can have the autonomy to make it small and simple repairs because that's another problem uh, to keep the, the maintenance of the bicycle it can be uh, expensive 
uh, for this, uh, a lot of people here in Brazil. But we also see a, how bicycle is uh, in the more poor uh, neighbors, it is still being a very important way to transport and work. So it's like it's something sometimes connecting with poor people, but we try to show that's not the, just for poor people. And it's not uh, a symbol of people who didn't uh, make progress in life. That's very sad to see how the industry show cars and motorcycle. Motorcycle, it's very used here in Sao Paulo. And how they try to sell that as a way that to raise your life. And, and I love it. Last week, I saw an interview with Anira, the Brazilian singer. And I love it that she told me, like, I don't have cars. I can't have cars. I always traveling around the world. So if I get a car in every city that I live in, I could have a car. This idea for uh, young people, it's very powerful because what they want, uh, it's like a new car, a new motorcycle. And what we talk at our classes, it's like there is no problem to have car or motorcycle at all. You, but maybe try to think when have that, when you need to buy that because... Now you have to think about your future, maybe learn English, make a college, go to university, and car it's very expensive. It's a, it's always be a expensive thing to maintain. So we try to show that and show, as I said, how bicycle can be funny, happy, helpful. So that's very important and show also that uh, when we make this project living through bicycle, we invited people like Yalini. We did this uh, the cycle uh, the, the the cycle logistics day, the C day. It was something that we promote to see and show how delivering things with bicycle can be nice, can be uh, more. In diversity, and we bring the people from Senhoritas Correia, and that's at the in the outskirts in, in São Paulo. So we show that it can happen. It's can it can happen in the entire city, and we we can see a lot of women, a lot of black people cycling. So that's very very powerful to to show that for young people, young people here in Brazil. And we have a move also, it's the Avança na Mecânica, uh, I guess. And it shows one of the, the course that we did with Enrique Avancini. Enrique Avancini now it's the biggest MT biker that we have here in Brazil. And we did it, this course last year, and it shows like it was 800 uh, people for 10 places in the, the, the course. So it was very, a lot of people want to know more about mechanics. And one last thing, today we don't have a public institution or a public course for mechanics, uh, from bike mechanics. And I heard it a lot, like it, the lack of people working with bicycle also helps to we don't have more people cycling because uh, a lot of people uh, even with the electric bicycle the e-bikes it's uh, if you broke your e-bike if you have some problem you can fix because of the lack of uh, mechanics here in Brazilian marketing so what Arumea Zero wants it's more than just Aru have this course it's how it can be a public course in every school or a, a universities. I don't know, have more. We used to have this kind of course in Brazil, but more than 10 years, we don't have any more. It, 
just uh, in the part two school that we are partner. Uh, we sent some people that did the living through bicycle for the part two school. Uh, but it's just Arume Azair and part two and another course they, that created these jobs in Brazil. And in Baikatona, the innovation uh, program, also it's very important because here in Brazil, the innovation contest and hackathons, most of them are just for startups. They are looking for the unicorn and blah, blah, blah. And it also don't reach this kind of people, like more uh, women or black people and brown people because it's way more uh, concentrated to people that has a degree or something like that. So when we promoted something like Baikatona, we are also not just promoting bicycle, but promoting innovation, promoting uh, new jobs and new business for people that not included in this talk, let's in these programs. Now, Eloisa, you were um, attending uh, Velo City, same as I was in Leipzig, Germany, and you actually did, gave a presentation there, and uh, and part of it was really talking about this concept of the urban bicycle hub. Explain what the urban bicycle hub is. So, John, uh, we have this context um, before. I think the, in the first slides that we have already talked about uh, because what we. Our plan is to implement a bike parking station, but as we started thinking about it and thinking about this context that is this place called São Miguel Paulista, uh, which, which we have already shown some pictures of it, that is in the outskirts of São Paulo. As we started thinking about and started planning how to implement a model of bike parking station, uh, we understood that we could create a model that uh, it's not just for parking the bike, but we also can have other other kinds of services there and create, therefore, our urban bicycle hub. And the idea here is to understand the bike parking together with other services, so uh, bike sharing, the bike shop, as we talked about the mechanics. Uh, we also can understand this bike, bike parking station and how can we create a model of financial sustainability and also have services like naming rights and advertising to support uh, this bike parking as a free service and also all the like a fan and other services together with it and here in this model what i think it's something new that we are really focusing in it is the cycle logistics hub and because we have this we have projects related to cycle logistics in the territory, and we understood that as we create a space that has a space to have like um, some kind of services as less mile done by bicycles, or we have also this kind of service that is called a pick up and drop off that we can get a package there or send a package through this, like this cycle logistics hub. We can afford a service that sometimes it's not affordable in this kind of contest that is in the outskirts, that is in the slums, that is close to favelas and so on. And yeah, based on it, we created this idea of a human bicycle hub. And that's, that was the project that I presented in Velo City. I love it. I love it. It's great because there's so many different uh, aspects to this. You've got uh, you've got the bike shop, you've got the cafe, you've got the you know, it can be this uh, cycle logistics hub. Uh, so it's more than just the, the bike parking uh, alone. So that, that's fantastic. If we were to give advice to, uh, you know, somewhere else in the in the globe uh, of getting an organization like Aero started, uh, Maru, what what would you say is the is the way to go about this? Uh, you know, it's been around since 2011 now, so you've you've made it past you know some critical milestones here. 
it's clearly a diverse program. What advice would you have for a, a, a city trying to get this started? Uh, you know, maybe not even in Brazil, maybe it's somewhere else. Uh, something that we are, uh, I think it's about that maybe don't start, we have a, a problem, the lack of cycle lanes here in Brazil, in the entire globe. And before the cycle lanes, you can support the local group of uh, the bike kitchen, the group of, here in Brazil, we have a lot of uh, pedal groups that people that get along to cycle one or two times per week, just for leisure. Uh, but that's very important how you bring people. So, of course, the cycle lanes are very important, but what we talk when we are talking to other seats or other people, it's about that support the programs first. Like a program, it's a, a program that teach about bicycle at schools. Uh, a program that teach mechanics and help business to uh, include bicycle at their business. It can be more simple or not so the same difficult that you had when you're gonna build something in a city because you need money, a lot of bureaucracy, you have the haters, but when you do a program like to teach kids to cycle, uh, that's a joke that we do here. It's our more the cutest program that we have is Zero Little Wheels. So nobody can be against teaching kids to cycle. It's that, that kind of thing that you, that's no argument against that, like. So it's maybe just take the focus in the problem, not, not the problem, the challenge of cycling. And because we also, sometimes people ask for us, like, oh, in my seat, we don't have cycle lanes. Can Aromea Zero or other people work here with bicycle? And we say, that is, we must work in this place that don't have anything, you don't have cycle lane, don't have uh, bike parkings, because there is a lot of people cycling for sure. But after that, and when you are teaching about mechanic, entrepreneurship, uh, advocacy, it's something that we talk to about how you can organize it and claim for better infrastructure. Uh, but the first thing is, I guess, support these groups. And we are thinking about to find a group. Uh, in Aromea Zero, we make this decision to work, it, to be an NGO, that people work on that. So we are not volunteers. We choose. We are not against uh, volunteers at all. We believe it. But uh, we felt like I just work with Armea Zero my entire day. Like, I have this privilege to just work with that. It's not uh, simple and easy to get the salary, but I guess that's an example that people uh, can think about. Like, let's have a, some people working, have a salary, and not just the volunteer. I, I, that's very important, the volunteer. But, but think about having this uh, support so you can have more diversity people also working and being uh, totally focused, focused on bicycle. And another tip is don't work just with people have, uh, who cycle. It's another thing that Armea Zero, Eloisa, uh, it's an example, like she's, and you can talk, uh, Louise, about how much you cycle, but it's, we didn't work with Eloisa, we did we start to work because she's a great cycle, but because she's a great urban planner, a, a, a great person who makes a great work in, uh, leading the program. And sometimes when we open a new position here, a lot of people work like, oh, I love bicycle, it's my passion, it's my life. That's very important and that's beautiful and we need more people. But I don't, maybe she or he is just a bike lover, but won't be a good coordinator or program coordinator or uh, something like 
who take care of your money, it's kind of thing. So be more open to the kind of organization, how it can work with bicycle. I love that. I love it. Yeah. And it's, it's so important too. You, you, you touched on a couple of really good points there. Uh, one is that, yeah, haters are everywhere. <laughs> Resistance is there to change is, is global. Uh, the other really cool thing that you did that you talked about there was, uh, was, you know, really engaging people who are not already considered cyclists, people who are avid bike riders. Uh, Eloisa, it, for to close us out, why don't you kind of share from your perspective just that? How do we get more? And this is globally again; it doesn't have to be you know just Brazil uh, in general. But we've got an international audience here, people tuning in from all around the globe. How do we get more women riding who may not be riding now? Nice. Just to point here is that uh, when I started working in Aru, I really didn't cycle. I was like, okay, I don't have to cycle, but not something that I do every day. And what I think it's nice about it is that when you get closer to it, I, I, cycle, I cycle much more now than I was cycling when I started working in the institution. So... This is something that I, I think it's also important because when we, we, we get close to, to to the importance of the bike or the benefits of the bike, it's also something that makes you, you want to use more of it. So just to point it. And what I think it's important to bring more women to the to the women in cycling is that I think it's important to create programs that understand this gender inequality but not the gender one just of it because when you, we talk about like it's something that I, I i always say is that when we talk about context with social of social inequality that is something that's not just related to brazil but also the global south and other countries is that we have to understand uh, that it's not about just the gender agenda, but also the race agenda and other inequalities. So if you want to fight, to fight against it, it's important to understand all the topics related. And it's something that we try to do in Aru. So when you we open a course and we got the applications, we, we try always to think about all these inequalities and bring more people in our courses and also in the team, I think. And yeah, I think it's important to think, to think in this really intersectional agenda. And just to mention, uh, this is also, when I was in Dallas City, I, we got this sponsorship of the Dutch Cycle Embassy and what we were talking to them some weeks ago, and we also have an article published together, is that it's really important to bring uh, organizations of the global south to this kind of event because of it because we have this context that are totally different from Germany or other countries of the global north and I think the way we deal with it is also is like a new technology it's like it's something really new and this is really important to bring that's for example in NATO we understand bicycle not just as a means of, mean of transport but also as a mean of education, as we talk about zero little will or culture as bike art or social entrepreneurship. Yeah, well, it's, it's a big range of possibilities. And I think it's also important. I love that. Yeah, that's great. It also brings up a really good point, too, that oftentimes these challenges transcend uh, just gender, because maybe it could be something that's not necessarily gender oriented. Maybe it, it, it could be race. It could be, uh, you know, social standing and poverty uh, types of stuff. And then just not ever being exposed, never having having ridden a bike. And then maybe that's the key thing. So it could transcend uh, gender because, you know, certainly even even a male who never had a chance to, to learn how to ride a bike. Uh, you know, isn't, isn't self-confident. It doesn't, you know, feel like they know how to, let alone how to fix a bike. And so uh, we shouldn't just assume that it's, that it's just gender oriented. It's, it's much more complicated than that. And it's, it transcends all of that. What a fascinating program you all have there. 
I am so delighted that we had this opportunity to chat and so delighted you had that opportunity, Eloisa, to, to, to attend Velo City. It is incredibly important that the Global South does have this, this uh, opportunity to, to say, hey, what about us? We're, we're doing this too. And it's so encouraging to see the, the great work that you all are doing and, uh, and, and that you had that opportunity in that platform uh, at Velo City in Leipzig, Germany. Thank you both so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. This has been an absolute joy and pleasure. Uh, I can't wait to come down and visit you. Thank you, John. And please come and come visit us. We will have a lot of bike art festivals, and we also have the Bicicultura. It's a festival from UCB. That's the Brazilian major cycle activist organization. And also uh, something that we like to reinforce is the the importance like the cycling embassy really to support us but also the bicycle market support more the organization and uh, people who works with bicycle and at your site we, uh, that's a bottom call it uh, donated so if you want to or who was who is watching or listening to us can make a donation we have a with uh, kids playing like the marbles and other plants that you can choose and also congratulations John for the activity of podcast and for us it's very important to see new medias and new people and more people talking about bicycle and for us in Brazil it's also very important to show that we are part from a international podcast and we present our job so thank you a lot and congrats i love your channel too thank you john and yeah it's also a pleasure for us to to share our experiences in your podcast and yeah please come visit us i think we also have next year the world bicycle forum here in brazil it will be in brasilia so welcome <laughs> always welcome Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you have not done so already, be honored to have you subscribe to the Active Towns channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. And if you are enjoying the Active Towns channel, please consider becoming an Active Towns ambassador. Uh, it's easy to do so. Just head on over to the Active Towns website where you can click on the support button. We've got multiple options out there, including uh, Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, and even leaving a donation for the nonprofit. Uh, oh, and you can also access the Active Town store from the website there. Uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.